Oh, my goodness. Good morning. Good morning. All right, much better. Good to see you this morning. So here's what I know. Some of you, even watching that clip, are like that grumpy manager. Why do we have to watch a Dave, for example? Why do we have to watch that Christmas? What, is this? what does this have to do with Jesus? You know? And others of you are like Elf in that movie. You're like, I'm so excited. This is, look at, there's trees up, and we're just, uh, and you don't close your eyes till Christmas or something. So here's what I want to tell you. Who are you? Which one are you? How many of you would say you're the grumpy manager this time of year? Hey, hey, get your hand up. Just raise your hand. Okay, good. All right, you're the grumpy manager. How many of you are more like Elf this time of year? All right. Some of you are in between. Now, let me tell you who I am. This is, this is, this is going to be a shocker to some of you. You ready? This will not be a shock to Mike. I'm both. I, I'm grumpy, excited, and then grumpy again. It's just this is the season for that, especially when you're a pastor of a church. I think most pastors are that way. We love this season because there's people who come to church who never come to church. We call them our CEOs, Christmas and Easter only people. Right? And then, but there's also uh, things that happen this time of year that we don't like, and families that struggle. And, and of course, with COVID this year, it's made it more difficult on everybody. Listen, I just love thinking about spring break coming up and looking back like this was a vague, bad memory, you know? And so, as we go through this season, I want you to know that no matter if you feel like the grumpy manager, some of you were honest. Some of you just lied, by the way. I just want you to know. Some of you out there are probably lying at home. If you feel like the grumpy manager or if you feel so excited, either way, I want you to know something. You're blessed. And so every week during this series, these will be shorter messages, which can I hear an amen from? Amen. amen. All right. So these will be a little shorter messages during this season. Uh, make it a little easier on some of you who hate wearing masks. Um, but also, um, you know... With the commercialization of Christmas, I think one of the things we forget is how blessed we are. Listen to this verse from Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel means that God is with us. And you need to realize that you get used to these stories Christmas stories, and you just start to read them like they're stories. The Bible is different than any other book. Number one, it's inspired by God, and He can use it in your life. So anytime you hear these stories, don't just read them like, a, like you're draining spaghetti through a sieve. When you read them, let them soak. Let God use His Word in your life. And so as I talk about these different things, I want you to Read the story with new, fresh eyes. And even ask the Holy Spirit, if you're a Christian, say, Holy Spirit, speak to my heart about this. Because no matter how you feel, some of us, you know, it's from too much sugar or, I don't know, we're just grumpy. Some of us are just, some of us are just more grumpy than others. Some days are hard, though, no matter what's happening in your life. Um, I've had several phone calls about people who've lost loved ones in just the last few weeks, young people. Who passed away. I can't imagine what you experience, especially this time of year, as you lose loved ones. I've talked to people about people who are hurting, people who are in the hospital, people who are struggling with COVID and other things. But even in the middle of all that, no matter what your doctor just told you, no matter what your circumstances are showing you, you and I are blessed. So I want you to say that after me, just the words, I am blessed. We're going to say this several times today, and if nothing else, you might remember that today, okay? So you're going to say, I am blessed. Ready? One, two, three. I am blessed. Hey, that was pretty good for a Sunday morning, first service. There's some caffeine in this room. I'm glad. All right. So we're going to talk today about three reasons we're blessed, but I want to start by telling you about my mom. My mom shocked me this week. Now, she didn't even know she shocked me. I had to act like what she said was very normal. And your childhood to you, by the way, is normal. If, if you tell somebody else about your childhood, they may look at you and go, what? And you're like, well, no, it's just how it was, right? So to you, it's normal, but it may not be normal. So this week, uh, we, we have the tree up. My mom has ordered, the, the Amazon guy is visiting our house every day. If, if he doesn't come today, he's going to ask me, is your mom okay? 
Because there are presents showing up on the door every day that say Betty Joyce Brookins. By the way, her name is Betty. She never went by Betty because everybody in her high school class was Betty. So she said, forget Betty Boop. I'm going with Joyce. So Betty Joyce is her name. And so Betty Joyce Brookins, those, those things come up. They show up on the thing. She's so excited. She's showing me things she got for the family. And she's stoked. And I remember this is what she was like as a ch- when I was a child. She gets so excited about Christmas. She was almost like Elf. And she loved to decorate. Once a year, we would have a party in Miami. We had a fireplace because my dad was a builder. There's no practical reason for a fireplace in Miami, just so you know. But my parents would turn on the air conditioner once a year, light a fire, and have a party. It was the craziest thing that ever happened. And my mom was always excited. And so we're, we're, we're celebrating Christmas this year. I remember as a little kid sitting Now, some of you who are young are going to have no idea what I'm about to talk about. We would sit by the record player, which was this big and this tall. And I remember my mom would put it on long play. You know how they did long play? She would stack up the records on top of each other. Remember that? And put the little thing over it to hold it, and it would get to the end of the album. And if you were unlucky, it would drop two or three, and you'd miss out on a couple, right? But but it would drop one, and then you'd hear the next one. And so I can remember as a kid, we had the Chipmunks original album, which, by the way, I spelled wrong in my notes. I spelled it like Chipmunk, like, All will be the Chipmunk. Christmas season. Anyway, sorry. Um, Gene Autry had the original Gene Autry. We had some children's choir. I had no idea who it was, but they were like, ooh. I think my mom put that one on last so we, she'd find us asleep in front of the thing. Bing Crosby, Dean Martin, all kind of folks that, were, that she would put in there. She had the mix, you know, with everybody, Sammy Davis Jr., everybody together, Dean Martin. They'd all singing, you know, and, and we'd sit in front of that radio front of that record player with the diamond needle. We were so excited. It had a diamond needle and it was in stereo, right? So my mom, we're talking about all this stuff and, and I was remembering my childhood, how excited my mom was about Christmas and she loved to decorate, still does. My mom says, you know, I didn't have Christmas as a child. It was like that, that moment where you hear the record go. I was like, what? She's like, yeah, once we got old, she's talking five or six. We never had Christmas again. We just didn't do Christmas at our house. I said, you mean no present? She said, when we were young, maybe got one present. But she said, as we got older, nothing. We didn't even celebrate Christmas. And all of a sudden I went, and so I had to act like that was normal. By the way, she's probably watching this right now. Hey mom, thanks for watching. I'm telling everybody your story. But as I thought, I thought, no wonder she loves Christmas. And let me tell you why. I remember as a child at Christmas time going with my parents to the Boys and Girls Club in Miami and then bringing gifts to the Boys and Girls Club. My mom has always gone out of her way to share with people in need because she understood how blessed she was. So listen to me. If you Don't understand how blessed you are. And the enemy wants you to think that you're not blessed. He wants you to think that you're struggling and you're suffering and you're whatever because he wants you to become selfish and self-centered. But if you recognize how blessed you are, then you will begin to release the blessings that God's given to you to bless other people. So let's read this story of blessing today. Number one, three reasons we're blessed. Number one, because God came to us. Here we go, Luke chapter one. You've heard this probably 343 times. Here we go. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth. Now I'm gonna come back to Gabriel in a minute. Cool stuff about Gabriel. To a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. This is all fulfilling Old Testament prophecy. That's what Luke's point was. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. Now, in the Greek, this is really cool. He says, Grace to you who has already been graced. Now, it doesn't say that Mary gave away grace. It said that he brought grace to her. The the Bible is very clear that Mary was not the one who earned this. The idea of grace, you ready for this? You know what it means? It means unearned favor. 
So the angel was not saying, you deserve this. He said, God's grace has come to you. And by the way, this this angel Gabriel is the one who gave Daniel the visions in the Old Testament. Daniel prayed to God and God sent Gabriel. The Jews knew that you never prayed to angels. That's actually in their early writings. You don't pray to angels, you pray to God. And if God wants to send an angel, he can. And so when Daniel prayed to God, God sent sent Gabriel. By the way, Gabriel was not an archangel. Did you know that? We say that all the time. The archangel doesn't say that. Michael's the, the one. So he comes and explains to Daniel, this is the same guy, the same, the same one that he calls a man later on. We know that he came and showed up and God sent him. And he's the one, we found out earlier, that stood in God's presence. So the angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. And then he says, the Lord is with you. By the way, that's true today for you if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian today, the Holy Spirit is with you, and the truth is the Lord is with you. You might have forgotten, but the Lord is with you today. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. By the way, Gabriel always said that. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. The angel starts out by saying, Mary, you've been given grace. And then he says, don't worry, God is with you. And then he tells her what's going to happen next. If you're going to walk through this life, you and I have to recognize that God is with us. The difference between Christianity and every other religion is every other religion. Islam tries to earn its way to God by those pillars that they have to do. Other religions say if you do these things, then maybe, just maybe you'll get into heaven if you accomplish these things. If you go on your mission, if you become a missionary, if you do these things, then maybe, just maybe you'll make it into heaven. Christianity flips all that around. Why? Because God said, I'm going to send Jesus to you. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Because God sent Jesus to us. This is the beginning of the story that led to our redemption. You know, there's something about having somebody with you. Last week, we had a roofer out to the house that was so exciting. Such a great time of year to find a roof leak. Let me tell you how I discovered the roof leak. I was in my living room, and it was raining outside. And all of a sudden, I looked at the fireplace, and water was coming out of the fireplace. Can I just give you a hint? Water's not supposed to come out of your fireplace. That's not on the list. So the roofer came out. He put his hand on the chimney and the chimney swayed. That's not a good start either. So they pulled the roof apart. They took the roof apart. They had to replace even part of a truss. It was bad. And then I thought, you know, I better take a look at the fireplace. Well, there was rotted wood around the fireplace, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff off, and I'm going to redo the fireplace. But I realized as I started, I had no idea what I was doing. You ever do that? If you haven't done that yet, then you're really not a real handyman. Because you need to get in the middle of a project and then realize, oh, no. And so I texted Tracy from church, Brian's wife, who's very handy. I call her a handy woman. And I said, what do you think about this? Does that look like it fits right? How does this look? And I sent her a picture and she said, that looks great. Keep going. Let me know how it comes out. Can I tell you something wonderful? It was wonderful that I could refer to an expert and say, what do you think? Some of you men, you come out of your closet with two shirts, right? And you have a wife who goes, don't even think about that one, right? To have somebody with us to help us. Listen. If you're a believer, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is with you. So the next time you're feeling anxious or frustrated, can I tell you? Take a moment to say, God, I know you're with me. Would you relieve my frustration, my anger, my aggravation? Father, would you show me what to do? Why am I I feeling this way? God, what's going on in me? Lord, help me to love that person that I don't even like. And the Holy Spirit, because we're blessed, he came to us and he's with us. Because God came to us, I am blessed. And you're going to say, I am blessed after I say that again. Because God came to us. Very good, very good. Almost sounds like a cult in here. Number two, 
that's terrible. Because God's word never fails. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. And then he says this, for no word from God will ever fail. God keeps his promises. God does what he says. You can look back in the Old Testament and see that the prophecy about Jesus was coming true. And he, said, he says to her, this is what's going to happen. And Mary goes, how's that going to happen? Now, this was very different than Zechariah. When Zechariah said something to the angel, Zechariah basically said, that can't happen. I'm old. And Zechariah was smart. And my wife is advanced in years. He didn't call her old, by the way. And so he says, I'm old, and, and she's getting up there. You know, he didn't, he didn't quite throw her under the bus. And, and basically, the angel looked at him and said, oh, you don't believe? Okay, you're going to be quiet now for the next nine months. Congratulations. And so from then on, he became pantomime Zachariah. Pantomime? No, that's not the right word. What's it called when you do the... What's the game called? Charades. Charades. So the holy one to be born will be called the son. And then it says, no word from God will ever fail. You know, can you imagine her just sitting there and listening to this? Things are about to change and she really can't do anything about it. God has come. This is what's going to happen next. Now, I don't know if you've had this, this is what's going to happen next moment. I can remember being in the hospital and the doctor coming in and saying, hey, you're going to need surgery. And then he walked through and explained the surgery. And you know what I've realized about surgery? I had so many. I realize, because people say to me all the time, I'm worried about surgery. And I say to them, you don't have to worry about surgery. Now, what I want to say to them is you need to worry about recovery. But I don't say that. I'm like, you don't have to worry about surgery because you go in. They say, are you nervous? You say yes. And then they put something in your arm and you go, I, I can care less. Do whatever you need to do. And then they roll you in and they say, count to 10. And you go one, two. And then you wake up. And then you recover. The surgeon had to take care of it. You just went in. Listen, as a believer, you are God's vessel. And God says that his word never fails. Do you trust him today? Do you believe he's going to take care of you? Do you understand that you've been promised heaven, which is way better than earth? No more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. By the way, sometimes I think God allows suffering on earth so that we realize that we're not in heaven. So we recognize this is not it. Whenever we hang on to the world too tightly, Corey Ten Boone said, God will, will wedge our hands open to cause us to let go. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Do you believe that? God cares for you. The Bible says his word never fails. He cares for you. Remember that today that you're blessed. Because God's word never fails, I am blessed. Because God's word never fails. Very good. You're awake still. Number three. So because God came to us, because God's word never fails. Number three, because we believe what God says is true. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. There's some awesome thoughts in here. One being that the baby was still in the womb. The Bible refers to it as a baby and shows that the Holy Spirit is there. This is one of the reasons that we believe life begins at conception. The idea here is that this baby, inspired by the Holy Spirit, leapt what he would be doing the rest of his life, John the Baptist, who would be welcoming Jesus, his cousin. But why am I so favored, Elizabeth said, that the mother of my Lord should come to me as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And then he said this, she said this, listen, blessed is she who's believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. In Acts 16, 31, it says this, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Do you believe that God wants to save you? Do you believe that God died for the world to save that neighbor that you've been praying for? That child you've been praying for? That friend you've been praying for? 
I want to encourage you, if you haven't been praying for somebody who needs to know Christ, begin to do that. Ask God to open doors. Ask Him to do what He said. And, to, and God, I know you sent the promise of Jesus. So Lord, would you save my friend? Would you draw them to you? Lord, when I'm going through life and I'm frustrated, Lord, would you give me the power to walk through it? His word never fails. He fulfills his promises. Because I believe what God says is true, I am blessed. Because I believe what God says is true, I am blessed. I'm blessed. We're all blessed. If you're here today or you're watching online and you've never given your life to Christ, I want you to know something. When I was in high school, somebody started witnessing to me, telling me about Jesus, and I, I thought, well, I've been to church, and I'm a good person. I don't really know what they're talking about. I'm a Christian because I have been to the right places. And they began to challenge me, and they invited me on a retreat that was also a ski trip. I went to ski. And God used that ski trip and that Revival speak that uh, conference speaker that spoke to begin to plant his word in me. In April of that year, I made a new, fresh commitment to Christ, which was the time I really surrendered my life to Christ, my senior year of high school, right before my senior year of high school. And I want you to know that today, wherever you are, you're blessed by God when you give your life to him. And if you've never surrendered your life to him, just like I did in high school, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you about the, after the service about what it means to surrender to him. Maybe you're watching online. You can send me a note or an email. And I'd love to talk to you about what it means to live in that blessing. Because no matter how you feel, no matter what's going on in your life, when you surrender your life to him, you're blessed. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for these moments. Thank you that we are blessed by you in so many ways. Lord, it's so easy to get caught up in the, in the secularization of Christmas, in the marketing, in the things that go on around us. Father, it's easy to get caught up in the worries and the fears and the frustrations and the fighting. But Lord, we want to recognize, even right now, that we're blessed. We thank you for these moments to acknowledge our blessing. And I pray that during this week, Father, that when somebody asks how we're doing, we would just say, I'm blessed knowing that we've been blessed by you. Thank you for these moments together. In Jesus' name, amen.